We have Barb Anderson here today to talk to us about uh, her experiences in Marymount, a longtime resident. And I thought we'd talk about, first of all, tell me about your family and how you came to live in Marymount. Okay, let's see. My family moved here in 1941, same year as the incorporation. Um, we had originally lived in Hyde Park. Um, I was two years old at the time. Remember it well. <laughs> I re I actually, I do. It's amazing. Oh. I, I do remember several you know, things from back then. But anyway, I can remember pulling up, you know, the street into the driveway and thinking, this is nice. And the, the people that lived next door had four kids. And the girl was sitting on this little hill, and she had blue shoes, and that is very vivid in my memory, is <laughs> her blue shoes. So that was my first, you know, I didn't care about the house or anything like that, but the blue shoes were interesting. So anyway, um, my father worked for the Central Trust Company. He was, uh, he had immigrated from England. And right at, in, in the, um, <laughs> um, in the depression, and uh, went to work for a Central Trust Company. And of course, that was the bank that was in Town Square down there. But he worked downtown, so. So it's where the PNC Bank is now. Right. Well, yeah, oh, it was Central it Trust. Was. Yeah. Um, what is now PNC, and I, I don't remember when, but I mean PNC is out of Pittsburgh, and they gobbled up Central Trust, and for a long time there was a building downtown that said Central Trust Tower, <laughs> yeah, so, um, and that's where he worked, is down there, so, and then of course 1941 was in wartime, and my father was in, in 42 or early 43 was drafted and of course all the men at the bank said don't worry Art, we'll get you out of it ha, ha, ha. and he said no i'm you know this is my country i'm gonna so he went off to battle and was stationed in germany and uh, you know, any full soldier suit. I remember he has a picture of him guarding the Rhine River. So, and at that point, he had never been back to England to visit his parents. So, in this process, he was wounded, not very badly, but enough that they sent him to London. So he got to see his family again and everything. And and the one story my aunt tells was. You know, um, my uncle Edward, who was in the Army Air Corps, he was a navigator, and then my dad, and both of them were on leave there in, in London with their sister, and she had one on each arm, and, and of course everybody said, that's terrible, you, with those yanks, and she said, those yanks are my brothers, and they said, yeah, right. <laughs> so and little things like that, but, but, and she was the youngest of his family. So you know, and then they later immigrated to Canada, which was um, easier for them than the United States because Canada being ruled by right. England, Commonwealth. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, they did that. Um. Tell me a little bit more about, as you were growing up in Marymount, what you did with the uh, children you uh, played with, or what were the fun activities in Marymount? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I lived in a section that was part of Marymount, but it wasn't in the original sales pitch of, of Marymount. And um, so there were the family next door, and then Across the street was another family, um, and I remember when the uh, that was the Brill family, the Payne family lived next door, and I always called him the frustrated farmer because he owned the lot next door to us, and he would 
plow that all up and plant everything and he farmed that and then his wife canned everything so they ate off the land so to speak all the time and then across the street were the Brills and the McAfee's and the McAfee's were part of the Brill family in there but I played with the boy in the family <laughs> being a tomboy. Uh, Gene and I used to play soldiers and we'd make lead soldiers in his basement and oh. play with them and everything. And I remember when Arlene was born, it was a big event. But as a little kid, and I tell her this now, she was a screamer. <laughs> I mean, if she didn't get what she wanted, she'd be I mean, screaming at the top of her voice. <laughs> she says, yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> so, but then, uh, of course, Arlene and I, at this point, are the old ladies of the street, you know. <laughs> we keep saying that. And we're out there, like, shuffling snow and doing things, and, you know, these the people that had kids that could earn money and do that, you know, never did. So <laughs> we said, yeah, it's pretty bad when the two old ladies are out here shoveling the snow. <laughs> you know, things like that. But, and then at the bottom of the hill, there were more kids. So we used to go down and I, one of the girls was uh, uh, a friend of mine and but we'd go down there and play, um, you know, in the twilight of the evening, you know, hide and seek and things like that. And on the corner of, um, of uh, that part of Petoskey and Wooster was a dairy called Cedar Hill Farms. And when my father went me the service, my mother got a job there. To, to help because of course the service money didn't, wasn't too much and uh, so she was a bookkeeper down there and uh, that was always fun for me because I had to check in after school walking home and I would go in there and then I'd go in the back where they did the took the stuff that was filled with milk and put it in the cartons and I'd help this one one man he was very taller and I, I think back and I think boy he must have thought oh my god <laughs> and how old were you like, then when you were doing this oh maybe seven eight nine you know that and but I would help him put it in the thing and then I loved their chocolate milk so when he finally had had enough he'd give me a carton of chocolate milk and I'd be on my way <laughs> so, <laughs> but I knew everybody, everybody in the thing, place was, you know, helpful to my mother, so, you know. And then Cedar Hill, that, that office branch moved down to the square where La Rose's is now, eventually, and that's when, you know, she, where she retired from. But anyway, um, just things growing up, things I remember is, you know, we would... I guess when I was about nine years old, the, on Miami Road, I, the, the buildings on the square went from where La Rosa's is now over to where it meets Graders, and that was the end of the buildings. Oh. And there was a little post office in that end near, near the Graders building. And then there was this skinny little um, section that uh, the aunt of a girl I was in school with started what they called the Village Grill. And you could get him, and we were all excited, you know, as kids, because hey, it was a place you could get a hamburger or whatever. But anyway, I can remember walking home up Miami Road when they were building the smaller apartments that used to be there. And, uh, you know, watching the men work, it was just always fascinating to me. You know, and I remember them putting in hardwood floors by hand, and, and you know, they didn't have one of the things now, the nail, or they'd do it all by hand, you know, nails in the mouth, and bang, 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 and, and so it, it was, I always was sort of mechanical, so I loved watching that kind of stuff. Help me when we were building our house. <laughs> <laughs> So, and the other thing that I always thought was interesting 
is you could stand at the movie there and look straight across the street and you could see all the way up to the bluff because there was nothing there across the street. At one time there was this little teeny building there who was a, like a shoe cobbler and then he didn't, he didn't stay there very long but you could see all the way up and then from that time on they built things. Where Graders is now, it was built as a delicatessen and it was called the Pinewood Food Shop. And it was really nice because you could go in there and they would make you a sandwich to your order, you know, so if you were really hungry, you <laughs> could go in. But, you know, in high school, we were always hungry. So, <laughs> so I can remember coming home from school and getting a fudge sickle and a glazed donut and then walking home and eating this. <laughs> So, and, and then of course that sold off. Graders at that time was in the drugstore, which was next to the theater, and that was Horton's Pharmacy. And it was a pharmacy and a drugstore, and they had a soda fountain in there, which was another fun thing that we all liked, because you could go in there and get a cherry Coke or one of those exotic drinks, you know, at that time. So. Um, did Graders start here in Marymount? I, I don't think they started here, but, but they, they, were... they, the family lived here. The okay. family grew up here. And so they had, they were part of the um, soda fountain thing in there. Uh -huh. And then eventually when they, they got a hold of, when Pinewood went out and they got a hold of that building, they moved down the street. So that was, that was good for them. And and you, do you know about when that was? No. <laughs> 50s, no, I'm 60s? I'm not really, I'm not really, in the 50s, I think. 50s, okay. Just, yeah. We don't have to know exactly. Just, yeah, okay. but uh, I'm trying to think. And then, of course, the, the, the village grill grew then and took over a section next to it and became um, what was there and what everybody loved, the village kitchen, and was bought by, um, you know, the Plate family. Mm -hmm. Maureen and her mother ran that for years and years and years. Yeah. So, and, uh, and I can remember some, when I got older, you know, a lot of the men would meet there in the morning. They had this big round table. And my friend always laughed. She said, yeah, they're up there at the table of wisdom. <laughs> so, you know, but it was a great place to eat, you know. And they would have lines in the evening, you know, and at lunchtime. So if you wanted to eat, you got there and you twiddled your thumbs and then you got up. And it moved fairly, you know, mm -hmm. rapidly, but that was, that was a neat place. Um, and then the rest of that section after graders, um, the first section after graders was a bank. Uh, and I worked there in high school, I won't, which I hated. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take after your parents, huh? <laughs> no, I, I really, you know, office type stuff and all that, that really, really wasn't my forte, but it got me a few bucks and eventually, you know, I was able to get a, a job at the movie as, you know, sold candy and popcorn and all that stuff. And then I could watch all the movies free because <laughs> the, the little candy stand was right there at the end, you know. And they only had one screen? Yeah. And so you could, and they had sort of curtains there and you could pull the curtains back and I could you know, once everybody got their popcorn and everything, I could sit there and watch the movies. So, I was a big movie fan. I loved it. Love movies. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to think what, what else. Well, for the most part, before and during World War II, you know, when I was maybe seven, eight, nine, that, um, before the war was over, a lot of the building had been stopped in Marymount. Things that were there were like um, Linden Place, Albert Place, Denny Place, you know, yeah. all those sections. That, the original. That original things had been built there. But um, 
and, and a few houses up on the bluff. I think there were four or five dotting the bluff. And, um, and let's see, I forget what that's called, but where you go up Pleasant Street and then I think Midden Way comes down in there. There's, it sort of branches off like this. There were a few houses over there too, which are on Pleasant Street, what Pleasant Street is now. Oh, okay. And, um, but anyway, since... But south of Worcester was pretty much open field, right? Right, right. And a lot of people would use those as gardens. Oh. Yeah, like on Center Street, on the left and right side, there were like two houses here and two houses here. And you can sort of tell, tell them by the, the stonework oh. on them. The one on the corner and one down. And some of my friends lived in them. And of course, the driveways off like of Albert Place went around there and you could see the backs of this, these houses and the fronts of the others. But, um, and then, then after the war and they started building, Myers Y. Cooper was a big builder in Marymount for a long time. That's why I know his name, he had a sign on oh, okay. <laughs> every house he was building. <laughs> So, um, and then people started moving in. And of course, business people, um, P&G and the big GE, the big companies who brought people into work would say, here's a good place to live. Oh. So we had a lot of transient people. I mean, a lot of them would be here for two or three years and then they'd move. So, and, and of course, those of us who were old Marymont people, you know, our friends were <laughs> jumping in and out all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but it was fun. It was fun growing up here. And then when they started building other stuff, you know, you could watch the houses go up, you know, one or two at a time. So the area to the east, west of, of Miami was all built after the war? No. No, yeah, that was all there. That was there. Oh, some of it, yeah, a lot of it was. I okay. mean, a house or two. And it wasn't, it, I'm trying to think. Um, but the most open area was south of Worcester. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that was all yeah. post-war. See, and, and, and they did a lot of house moving. If they were going to develop an area and there was a big old farmhouse there, they would get it on these big, it was so much fun to see this huge house going down the, the road on, the, on these roller things. And then they'd park it, like I know one of them's over on um, the south side of Pocahontas over there. It was a big old white farmhouse, oh. I remember that thing. That, that was fun to watch. They moved that from another location? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, if they decide, you know, like the house across... Now they tend to keep it and build around it, but then they moved it. Well, yeah, they didn't have a, a reason. They wanted the space to develop. Yeah. You know, and, and um, sometimes they would do it. Nowadays they would just beautify the house or something <laughs> and, and go from there. Yeah. But there are still some old farmy type houses that were there for a long time that they didn't move. Oh, okay. Um, another place is Park Lane and Harvard Acres, down down there. Okay. Near, you know, as you get near mm -hmm. Fairfax. You're right. So they had a lot of houses there because um, the map that is over there on the wall was an advertising map. And my stepfather, um, when he was first looking, he had an, a, an, I have an original of that that he had as this advertising uh, piece. And he had bought a house over on, I think he was on Harvard. Harvard Acres and Park do this. So half of it's one thing and half of it's another. And, but he had a house over there. And uh, that was interesting too, to see where he lived. He would put it out, so. Okay, let's see. Um, 
Oh, tr memories of transportation and travel. How did one get around Marymount or Cincinnati well, you, when you were younger? Well, for the most part, bus and streetcar. I mean, you could go over to Madisonville and catch a streetcar. Oh, really? Yeah. And when you were a child or older? Yeah, with my mother. Yeah, but I mean, Not when, when we were older. grade school, grade school probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think my mother, in her infinite wisdom, the pediatrician was in Northside. So if we had to go to this <laughs> doctor's office, like to get a camp physical or something, we had to get oh, over there, Okay. you know. Um, but most of the time, a bus. Because Marymount has always been on a regular straight through bus line. And we had two vintages. We had one that went straight downtown, which was the 28, and it still does it, the one that goes straight through all the way downtown. And then there was another one that, that sort of turned around in Fairfax and came back up. And then it went over through Madisonville and down the, what I called the long way. Yeah. You know. And so if you were downtown and it was time to come home, um, y you know, you were hoping that you could get a fast one. But if you couldn't, you had on the slow one. <laughs> you had to take the scenic route all the way through Hyde Park and that whole area. And they have that now, but it doesn't come through Marymount. They cut that off several years ago, oh. which I thought was sort of Dirty. I mean, you can go over, I think, and get it over near UDF on Bramble. You can oh, pick it up okay. over there. Yeah. Man. Okay. Yeah. But um, we, I had a friend who, who her grandfather wanted her to be this lovely next Sonia Henny, you know, <laughs> the ice skating. Okay. And the uh, um, Terrace Hilton had an ice skating rink up on the four, the eighth floor. So you can see it. If you look at the building, it's cut like this. And, then oh. goes, and that was an ice skating place. And so we would go down there. You know, she got, I, mean, I couldn't skate for a spit. <laughs> you know, I mean, she did it, had done it a long time before I did. But my big, you know, achievement was learning to skate backwards. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was fun. So we, we would take a bus down there oh. and hike the three or four blocks to the building, go upstairs. And about all, how old were you then? Uh, I'd say, geez, maybe 10, 11. Oh. And, and, you know, people thought nothing of it. I mean, if you knew I where know. you were going. Yeah, you I know. know. I so, know. And of course, That's sort of what I wanted to bring out. But. Yeah, well, by then, my mother, we had had a car when we first were in Marymount. And of course, because of the war, you couldn't buy tires, you couldn't buy... And of course, people in their infinite wisdom told her, oh, you'll never be able to do this. So she sold it, oh. which was stupid because she it was a nice little coupe. Mm -hmm. And she could have held on to it, and after the war, you know, she could have gotten tires. But no, she sold it. So we did not have a car again until... I was in college right after my father died, and I talked my mother into getting a car so she had some transportation, because she was home alone. And my sister had gotten married, and uh, um, you know, I was down at Hanover, and you know, and I can remember my dad developed cancer and I had been home on a weekend to see him and went back to school and like two days later we were on a field trip. I took geology and we were crawling around in a cave and the highway patrol found this group and you know asked for me and of course right away I figured what had happened, oh. he had died. Mm -hmm. And even though the guy didn't say that, I mean, you know, I knew he wasn't really well. So he rushed me back to campus <laughs> with his little siren. <laughs> and uh, a friend was there to pick me up and take me home. So I was home for a while until we got things settled and, mm -hmm. and everything. 
but it was not unexpected. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So anyway, that but then I sort of got my mother into getting a car so she could you know, at least yeah. run around and yeah. get where she needed to go without having to, you know, get on a bus and all that stuff. So But it's she, it sounds like there was still there was adequate bus service in Marymont even even yes, that well to downtown and stuff. And at that particular when I was um, I'm trying to think how long it was there. Um, generally speaking, when when my mother, we had to go to the grocery, and of course not having a car, our bicycles had these big baskets oh. on the front, and so we and Kroger's at the time was where La Rosa's and the bank, you know. Okay. And the bank only had a little sliver of a place oh. in there, and Kroger's was that whole section. And I could remember um, having to meet her there, my sister and I, with our bicycles, and she would shop and take the, we could each get two big bags in, in and take the groceries home, because there was no car, mm. you know. <laughs> and I can remember one time, I was a big girl, I stole some chewing gum, <laughs> and I'm chewing away. And I said, where did you say, where did you get that? At Kroger's. <laughs> so she made me take it back and, and pay for it, tell them what I did, and pay for it. <laughs> Very humiliating, you know. But, you know, I learned my lesson. And you remember it well. Yes, I do. <laughs> Have I remember having to sit on the counter. I mean, I wasn't real big at that point. This was before the basket situation. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, but I had to tell them what I did. <laughs> do I? Have? Yes, you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but, um, and then when, um, they built Kroger's um, on the corner there, you know, where the Strand is. That, none of that was there. The major, the basic part of that was the Kro Kroger's that they built. Oh, okay. A big square Kroger's, and I mean, wow, look at this big store, you know. So um, then Kroger's moved over there. Yeah. And then when Kroger's got a place down the hill, you know, here was this. So uh, Mr. Spinnenweber and his crew got a hold of it, made the strand, did a very nice job. And I will say everything that he has done building-wise has been first rate. Mm -hmm. He never mm -hmm. scrimped. He always made it. And, but looking at it, it's, it's where the deli, the deli is mm -hmm. now. That was yeah. all Kroger's. But, you know, if you didn't know that, you could not tell it. No. He refaced yeah. it, I gather. Oh, well, yeah, oh, he, but, but he also extended he had oh, other, you know, the walkway and everything. Oh, okay. And then the piece on the other side and the upstairs oh, and oh, okay. that whole thing. It was, the Kroger's at that time was like basically a one-story square thing. Oh, okay. But where they built it, as we walked to school, we'd walk by, and it was like a big dip in there, you know, okay. and it was part of a creek bed, I'm sure, mm -hmm. at one time, you know, because everything was through Marymont, you could, could pick it up, but they filled that in, oh. and they, they made all this, you know, and we'd watch it develop <laughs> as we'd go to school, because everybody walked, we walked from where I live now, up on the dead end of Petoskey, we walked all the way down to Dale Park, because Everybody in grade kindergarten through six went to Dale Park School. And then after that, we went to the high school, which was seven through 12. Oh. And it's in the, the building that is now elementary school. And if you look at the words on top of there, where the pillars are, it says Marymount High School. So that's where we went to high school. And you all walked and didn't think anything of it, probably. No. And actually, it was almost a mile. And the kids from Fairfax walked up here. And I can remember there was one girl who evidently had had polio and she had crutches. And this girl hiked all the way up from Fairfax to the high school. 
you know, because there were no buses, there was no need for buses. And my class graduated in 1957, and um, Terrace Park came in with Marymont in 58. Oh. So that's when they first had buses. Oh. Mm -hmm. And because they had to get them from Terrace Park. Now, Terrace Park was told they had a little high school out there, too. They had their own high oh. school. But the state decided it wasn't big enough for a school, says, you know, a state of infinite wisdom. <laughs> they gave them a choice. They could go to, you know, merge with Marymont or Anderson. <laughs> now, I don't know why they didn't say Milford, because it was closer, yeah. but they didn't. So they chose Marymont, and so then that was our first bus oh. transportation. Oh. Well, that's interesting. So, yeah. Okay, um, since you've lived in Marymount for a while, <laughs> why don't you tell us about celebrating holidays in Marymount and about village celebrations or anything that <coughs> happened that you can remember? Well, I don't, I don't recall, you know, basic village um, celebrations like we have in the Old Town Center oh, now, the okay. tree lighting. Actually, my husband's grandmother was one of the first three teachers at the elementary school. So she was responsible for planting a big ever that big evergreen tree that they light up now oh. on Old Town in Old Town. And I mean she was a charter member of the church. She was, you know, as I said, Marie Jordan who whose husband was the first mayor of Marymount. Oh. And and Marie and Carrie Conklin, who was grandma, and one other lady, which, who I don't even remember her name, were the first three teachers. And they were the first three in Dale Park. And of course, I didn't go there until, you know, 41, and that school was, I think, built in the 20s. You know, that was one of the first buildings that was open for business, of course. Right. And the same with the church. And, um, so, but that tree lighting became a, you know, a regular thing. And at one point, they decided they were going to have, it should be at the main square rather than the old square. And of course, they had a, a pine tree over at the new municipal building, you know, in there. And they did it there a couple of years. Well, it was a miserable failure because, first of all, people you had a hard time getting across the square and the traffic and everything and over there. So it wasn't as convenient as going down to the old town cell. And it wasn't as quaint and <laughs> lovely and all that <laughs> stuff. So they took it back. <laughs> so it didn't last there very long. Admitted well. failure and yeah. they moved back. <laughs> yeah, they said, work on, let's move back. But those that's the only thing that I can remember that, you know, I mean, people did their own thing. Yeah, and, but I remember they used to have ice cream socials at the, I read that they used to have ice cream socials at the, in the old town yes, square. Yes, they did. Do you remember those, oh. or were they gone by the time you... No, they had them, and they had them for a long time. And I'm trying to think what they became. Um, they, they, let me calculate here. Yeah, they, they had them there, and it was called Ice Cream Social, and everybody went there and got different kinds of ice cream and, you know, everything. And then they took it over to... The Kiwanis got involved in it and went over to the bell tower with it and had it over there for a while. Okay. And then it came back and it was on the front porch of the Perry Center for a while. So it sort of jumped around. Okay. Um, you know, but Marymont's tried many little things like that. And of course, one of the biggest celebrations um, has has been forever is Memorial Day Parade. And that started out, you know, of course, because of the war and stuff like that. But I can remember when I was a brownie age, um, we marched in that parade from that time on. And they had it, instead of where they have it now at the municipal building, 
you know there's a plaque right there in the median strip as you cross the street from the inn to the other side. There's a historical marker there. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, that is where they had the flag raising and everything oh. for a, a long time until they switched it over to the other side. Oh. So the parade would come up there and you'd stand there and little brownies oh. in there. And then we would go sometimes and have a cookout down in Dogwood Park because down they didn't have the ice skating or the lagoon there anymore. They drained that before we even moved here. I, it wasn't so good, I guess, buggy and things like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, they had nice fireplaces, big stone oh. fireplaces and picnic tables down there. So we would go down and cook our breakfast after the parade. And, and that was nice. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but that parade is still going on today. It has gotten bigger and better, of course. You know, it starts out with with Council and Kiwanis and Mary Elders and da 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 da. You know, everybody ends up with all the kids and their bicycles all decorated up, and so. Okay. What are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the village over time? Obviously, the one you talked about of it basically filling in during your lifetime, <laughs> the buildings coming, but other changes. What are some of the biggest changes you've seen? Well, Marymount's pretty stable as far as, you know, what it does. Changes uh, the school when they got in there and redid the school and it is now totally elementary school, the high school, and the building and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure it was great, but you know, it is. So, um, and it's interesting because sometimes we have, we have people that come in here. What, one thing I've noticed is people come in here we need to do this, and they make these changes, and then they move. And they sort of leave the, those of us here holding the bag, so, you know, it's either good or bad, and sometimes you have to pick up the mess, and other times you don't. But building that, it, there had been an, a smaller addition on that school at one time, and it the gym, is the big square part you can see and that it is now still the gym but when we were in high school it was the auditorium okay and they played basketball up on the stage so we had cushy seats for our <laughs> basketball games it's really we'd sit in the you know in the okay. thing with our feet up <laughs> on the you know, there was the orchestra pit down here, but up there was was the gym floor, and they played basketball, and, and that's where we had our gym classes and everything. And and I played girls basketball, which was half court at that point. You know, so we played there too. But of course, when they redid the school as it is now, they you know took part of that. And, Moved it out. Were you still here when some of the tu the tunnel was under the road? Oh yeah, yeah. That's where we used to run through there, yelling and echoing. And I think they ought to bring. It was funny because I always thought, you know, there was hardly any traffic. I mean, it was supposed to be safety for the kids. You could go under and not get hit by a car that came once an hour, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because you never hardly ever see a car. But they just filled it in and just blocked it in. It's still under there. And I, th I thought one time, you know, they really should dig that out because it would be a lot safer than putting up all these lights and stuff they have there. They could have had, yeah. you know, yeah. a nice... Yeah, interesting point. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, we used to, because the stairs went down and ran across and up the other side. And, yep, connected to the Perry Center. And when, of course, when we went to, we went to Sunday school in that building. And then we were confirmed in the church. 
And of course, nowadays, all the people say, oh, but we're not near our children. We're not. We weren't near our children either. We put them in the nursery, went to church. <laughs> when church was over, we walked back up, got our children. They had coffee in the, the lounge there. And, you know, it wasn't that hard. And I think what I see is nowadays the young people make things so hard. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, we can't do this, we can't, it's so hard on our kids. And the other thing I see, agree. <laughs> the other thing I see is, and I, I don't want to really insult them, but I think they're very egocentric. I mean, because as a driver, you are driving down the street and these girls will be walking. Instead of use, ever using the sidewalk, they're in the middle of the street with these twin or four baby stroller things and they glare at you <laughs> if you want to pass them in a car, which you have the right of way. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, come on girls, <laughs> you know, you aren't, and they do, they just, Today there was a, there were four or five of them jogging, and I'm driving down the street, and they just like this, and I thought, you know, you want me to hit you? Or you want me to? <laughs> but um, I mean, they they don't act like it's any of their responsibility, and I think that has to do with, you know, the mentality nowadays. A lot of people, a lot of the young people that have the big homes south of the pike, their parents have bought for them. Mm -hmm. They haven't had to really earn them. And I mean, most of us, when we were growing up, first of all, if you started any place, you were in a duplex or an apartment with the kids, then you moved up. And they, our house that I live in now, when we moved in, it was a five room one-story house. It had a living room, dining room, and two bedrooms and a kitchen. And that's where my sister and I grew up. Now, once we were married, my husband and I were married, my mother met a man through <laughs> my parents-in-law, and they hit it off. They got married. So we bought the house from my mother oh. for you know, reasonable. But it was a five-room, one-story house. Now, he had to understand my husband. If he thought he could do something, he'd do it. And, and knowing him, I never questioned it. So <laughs> he decided he wanted to add an upstairs on this house, take off the roof. And <laughs> I'm going, OK. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Did you live there while the movie yes. was Yes. <laughs> well, for part of the time. But I mean, he did. He went up and took the roof off. And some of our friends helped, you know. <laughs> but, um, and so we, I can remember nailing the floor, the, the subfloor up for the second floor, you know. I mean, he, we had built in while we, before we even started this one, some big bookcases mm -hmm. on the end. And so we just had um, plastic and covered this all up and everything and stored everything in our, our furniture in a barn that was next door that belonged to a neighbor of ours oh. where the vendors live now. Oh. There was a big barn. Oh. Yeah. And so, you know, but we did that and we. And Bob would work, and every night he'd come home, and he and our some of our neighbors finally said, "You know, we have to work tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he he worked when he could, and he put. But so I said, "Yeah, we need to don't saw anyway, hammer maybe, <laughs> but don't saw because those big saw." <laughs> so anyway, but anyway, we got that part of it done. And then we wanted to do a garage, and because um, we had this little teeny garage behind them, and, you know. And so we asked Mr. Payne if we could buy half a lot. No, he didn't want to sell half a lot. So we, you know, we're 
you know, thinking about what to do. So the paints moved out to Beachmont area, Anderson, to be near their daughter who lived out there. So he sold us the whole thing, and it, for practically nothing. I mean, he practically gave it to us, but bless his heart. You know, so that's why we have that double lot. I mean, the, the lot ends right on our garage there. Oh. So we were able to do a garage added to the house, and when he and Bob designed all this stuff, and um, I said, okay, if we're going to get into this, I want a fireplace. <laughs> so we had this, we have this huge garage, 24 by 20, I think it is, and for we had a trailer, so this big trailer oh. fit in the garage, and then a room on the back with a fireplace, bedroom above, big room above that. So we had, you know, quite a bit of extra space, which is sort of storage of junk, <laughs> <laughs> as things are. But we actually thought that we would have an apartment for our moms. Oh. And that was the idea. And of course, both of them got sick and died before that was a, came to fruition. So. Okay. And speaking of older people, you were director of Mary, Ma, of, uh, Mary Elders for a number of years. Talk to us about how you came to get that job and, and how long you stayed there. <laughs> okay, well, Mary Elders was a fairly new thing in Marymont. My friend Betsy Smith, who had lived here for quite a while, was volunteering there. And so I, of course, my children were getting older and I'm thinking college, so I was going to have to go back to work and I was a teacher. So I went and got some hours. And so I was lucky enough to be able to get a teaching assistantship, which uh, gave me basically a free education. So I ended up with a Master's of Education. And the year I graduated, which was 79, I, of course, there wasn't a whole lot of jobs available I was finding out. So my friend Betsy said, hey, why don't you come over here? We need a receptionist. I said, yeah, that's what I'm trained for, a secretary, <laughs> Betsy. In that. But I thought, hey, in the, you know, for a while. So I went over and I did this, and of course they had had a young girl there who got pregnant, married pregnant, left. The second girl they got was, I guess, not easy to get along with, with the board and stuff, and she, you know, wasn't really enthralled with both of English, but she got married and got pregnant and quit. So anyway, at that point, I had, <laughs> was, in the hospital with a hysterectomy and Betsy comes over and she says, you know, we want you to be director of the center. I said, why? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I said, Betsy, I'm not a social worker, I'm a teacher. And I said, you know, I can do it because I, I figure it's recreational management is what it was. And I said, but instead of hiring a secretary, you hire a, a social worker. So that's the way we went with it. And I started, and they had, they volunteered to come in and help me because I was still a little, you know, not with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to work, and they did that. And. Uh, but anyway, it turned out real well. We were in the, actually in the basement of the Perry Center building where they have the clothing store now. Oh. And um, then the school decided to close Dale Park. And basically they said, if there's any community group that would like room here, let us know. Well, MPF went over and they had a room upstairs. But I said, Betsy, come on, let's go look. So we ended up taking the whole basement of Dale Park. And um, we were there for 13 years. Oh. So until the school, and the, the deal was, um, if the school needed it again, we had so much time to get out. And they gave us a big, long time so we could look and find, and we looked and looked and looked and didn't find anything. Well then, our building that we're in now, 
um, had been a savings and loan, and Fifth Third owned it. So, you know, called Fifth Third to find out about it and wanted to look at it. And, you know, I thought it had great potential, smaller than we had, but hey, it would do. And of course, uh, Mr. Spin and Weber's um, property manager let me know that I couldn't do that. I said, well, what do you mean I can't do it? Well, it has no parking. And I said, well, yeah, it does if it's done right, you know. But anyway, we, we had a, a little disagreement on whether we should have the building or not. But we did get the building. We bought it. And Fifth Third was very generous um, in allowing us to have grants at the same time we bought it. I mean, so we got ready and did what we wanted to do to the building. And, so, and worked out the parking? Well, we had, you know. Well, there was parking, yeah. We had on the lot we have four places in the back, three places, and it's an odd lot is what it is. It's a funny shape yeah. lot. So there were four here, three here, two down the side this way, one in the front. Oh. So seven, eight, nine, ten places oh. altogether. And then we had an agreement with the school that for a buck a year we had use of the parking lot down at the school. Oh. So, you know, which we did, and uh -huh. most, most of the, I told the staff they had to park down there, but I had one staff member who wasn't going to do anything, I told her to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I was there 32 years, and finally I decided I, I should go. <laughs> so that is my history. Yeah. Well, we so I'm still here. <laughs> Still. For many years to come. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, thank you very much, Barb. And uh, oh, one more oh, thing. Okay. One more thing. I went all the way through the school system and graduated. My children went all the way through the school system and graduated from Marymount High School. My grandson, my oldest grandson. Um, lived with me for four years and graduated from Marymount. Um, his father was in the military, so he had traveled around so much, they thought it would be good if he settled down. So he lived with me and he played football and basketball and baseball. And so he graduated. So we have a three generation thing. Pretty, pretty impressive. So. <laughs> Well, thank you. I, I should say, probably for the recording, I should say that this is uh, 19, uh, 19, 2017 <laughs> in April. And thank you again. You're welcome. Uh, Let's see if she can handle this.